and it's going. So good morning and welcome to the Deerfield Community Church. We are an open and affirming community, and no matter who you are or wherever you are on life's journey, you or wherever are you zoom here. from. Um, a couple of announcements this morning. The first is if you are a representative council member or someone who should be attending the representative council meeting, um, that will be at 1045 via Zoom. You should have received an email or an invitation from Cindy Bradley. If you did not, please make sure you shoot her a quick note and get the invite. The crop walk coming up before we know it in October. Phyllis, what's the date of the crop walk? She's muted. She's October unmuted. October 18th. 18th. October 18th. So um, we'll continue to talk about the crop walk until beyond October 18th, because after October 18th, we're going to talk about how much money was raised. But um, please do, if you want more information about the crop walk, you can get in touch with Phyllis. Um, you can go online to the crop walk um, website if you do a quick Google search. And uh, there's a search on their website, believe it or not. If you type in the word Deerfield, it will come right up with our walk in our town and the people that are walking for our walk that you can donate to. You can register to walk yourself, et cetera, et cetera. And what so, time the party is. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Wishful thinking. So that is the crop walk. Um, Zoom. Just a quick update about Zoom. If you've been in a meeting in the last week, you probably have noticed that you have to now use a password, just like you had to this morning to get into this meeting. Um, that's going to be the norm moving forward. For meetings that are recurring that already had a password, there is no change. So if, for example, you're in the Aging with Grace group, you'll notice there was no change this week. Um, but if you were in the Zoom to Prayer group, you'll notice there was a big change this week that didn't get communicated <laughs> until after the meeting happened. So. Bear with us, we're, we're doing the best we can with these changes that Zoom has made for privacy and security, um, but just be aware of those changes. Next week, you most likely will not have to go into a waiting room like you did this morning for this meeting. It's another little checkbox that got uh, unchecked, but not saved apparently when we updated this conference. Oh, Tim. So, but Suzanne's doing a great job back there of clicking the little button and admitting everyone as, as people are joining, so. Um, if you are a middle school or high school age person or know a middle school or high school age person, we are, um, Maggie Schrock is working to get in touch with you and, and be in better communication with you as best we can for, for youth group type activities. Um, Maggie has, has started an initiative where she'd like to write letters to, to you and stay in touch. And if you'd like to be included in that, it is an opt-in thing. She's not going to just send you a letter. You have to opt in by sending her an email to maggieashrock at gmail.com, and then she'll put you on her list to, to be in touch. So please pass that on to folks that might need to know that outside of this community. Um, and if you're on right now and want to be included, make sure you shoot her a note. And I believe it's got to come from your parent um, to make sure we're opting in correctly. I, I, all of the above. All right. Andy has an announcement. He's dying to make it. Hi, everybody. Hope you're, you're doing well. Come a little bit further this way, Andy. There you go. There, now you're on the screen. <laughs> Am I? Yeah. Okay. Um, hi. Uh, we had a bit of a train wreck. Uh, I'm talking to the choir. We had a bit of a train wreck last week with one of the pieces, so we switched to another one. But by now, you all should have received um, some, some uh, model uh, recording, so please get them turned around and in uh, sooner rather than later so we can proceed with that. And um, everybody, I hope you have a nice, wonderful Sunday. Thanks, Andy. Um, adult education coming in October. Um, I'm really glad we named this thing something else because we used to, we kept saying the end of life series. Let's do the end of life series. And, <laughs> That didn't sound right to me. So exploring our wishes for a time of illness and end of life. Um, Lisa's looking to kick this off in the month of October. It's going to most likely be on Thursday afternoons and after worship on Sunday. But what we really need is if you're interested in this series, 
get in touch with Lisa so that she can gauge who's interested, when works for you time-wise, and then set up the appropriate meetings from then. So Everything he said, please. There you go. Uh, Lisa has a couple of things. I want to point out that once again, yesterday when you got the bulletin for this morning, there was also an extra attachment, which is an activity sheet for children and youth. I hope that uh, you all who are children and youth at heart or who have children and youth in your families were able to find and open that. And uh, any kids that are here this morning, we hope that if you're interested in doing that activity, you will uh, find, the, find the very simple elements that you need supplies and such to make that. I'll be talking about that later during the circle time. Second of all, Stewardship has asked me to share their exciting invitation. We want everyone to join in creating videos of as many DCC folks as possible. You too can be a star. Yes, you, you who think you could never be on video, you're on video now. So you can be a video star. Um, and um, we're asking folks to think about a 10 to 30 second, a 10 to 30 second sharing about the bountiful blessings we experience as a church. And you can be a star without having to make very much effort. You need to figure out what to say, but we will help you get taped and videoed so that it's easy to have happen. Um, so we hope that you'll consider that and that you'll let the stewardship team know um, that, that you're willing to do that. Finally, next Sunday, the 4th of October, we'll be back to both Zoom and live at a distance with masks right here in the parking lot. Next Sunday is World Communion Sunday. We hope that those of you who come will know that you have to bring your own chairs, you have to bring your own self, but you do not have to bring your own communion elements because we have safely prepackaged um, individual elements for those who are in attendance here. Those who are at home are invited to prepare their own sacramental bread and cup. We look forward to joining together in worship, whichever way works for you. And one last thing, just take a gander at the beautiful arrangement here in the front. Ann Cron came in early this morning when Andy and I were chatting and dropped this off. So Ann, thank you so much for making the sanctuary beautiful this morning. Mm. Okay, and he's doing something to the computer. Um, and while he does that, I will um, invite you all to take a moment as we welcome each other, we also welcome Christ into our worship and we welcome the light of Christ in this worship space and in all your spaces as we light the candle, maybe. This week, it's not even the lighter that won't light. It was a match that wouldn't light. But here we go. Let us welcome the light of Christ in our midst. giving Suzanne a minute to get back to the computer. <laughs> and would you join me this morning in our call to worship? God led the people long ago, guiding them with pillars of cloud and fire. Today, Today we are, we are still, still following, following God's, God's lead, lead as, as we, we journey, journey through, through a new through wilderness. New wilderness. May God's presence and power Give us hope. May the joy of the Spirit move with us and through us 
in all our days. And now would you join me in our opening hymn? It's number 290 and printed on the second page of your bulletin. Spirit of God, descend upon my heart and we will sing verses one and three. Spirit of God, descend upon my heart. Wean it from earth through all its pulses move. Stoop to my weakness, mighty as you are, and make me love you as I ought to love. Have you not bid us? Love you every way. Teach me the struggles of the same to To check the rising and the rebel sun. Suzanne, somebody's in love. The patience of Waiting unanswered prayer. There's the third verse. That's okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Waiting room. <clears throat> ah, will you join me in prayer as we seek God's presence and God's blessing? Gracious God, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for all the ways that you draw us together and as that you draw us into the beauty and wonder of your creation. We give you thanks, God, for the vibrancy of the colors of fall. We give you thanks for the blessings which befall us day by day. We ask that you would be with us in this time and help us to hear your word, to learn your message, and to go forth inspired to share it with others. All this we pray in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This morning, we have an unusual sharing of God's word. Um, I was trying to set us up with remembering all these things. And um, as you know, the last two or three weeks, I've been using a psalm that did that kind of thing. I couldn't find a psalm big enough, comprehensive enough, for what I hoped to have happen in this slot today. So I have to say, I kind of wrote us our very own psalm for the morning. It sounds a bit like the psalms that we've been reading, but it takes pieces from some of the psalms and from the book of Numbers and from the book of Exodus and eventually from the book of Matthew and the book uh, of the Gospel of John as well. So um, I invite you to join in what I'm calling a liturgy, because um, I'm not bold enough to really say that I wrote a psalm, a liturgy of remembrance, thanks, and praise. Oh God, like our ancient ancestors of faith, we are on a journey through a wilderness. And you, oh God, are with us. 
You lead and guide us with your spirit, just as you led your people with the spirit in the pillars of cloud and fire. You provide for us when we no longer have what we need to continue. You nurture us with manna for our souls. You refresh us and quell our thirst with waters of hope and justice. We remember the 40 years when Moses, Aaron, and Miriam led the way in the desert. We remember that you gave them commandments about how to live faithfully in those days. Ten they numbered and became the law. To love, to love and, and honor, honor you, you and, and you, you alone. alone. To keep your name and your Sabbath holy. To honor your parents and others by forsaking murder, adultery, and stealing. To tell the truth about others and respect all that they possess. While, While respecting, respecting all, all the, the blessings, blessings we, we ourselves, ourselves receive. The people held your commandments in their hearts. And the tablets of your commands, they carried with them as a holy reminder of your word. Even after the people came into the promised land and inhabited it, your word and your wisdom helped them live. In the fullness of time, when the tablets were worn, you came into the world to renew your message. In Jesus, all the world received your commandments renewed. You shall love God with all your heart and soul and, and strength. And, and you, you shall, shall love, love your neighbor, neighbor as you yourself. love yourself. In his final teaching, Jesus made it plain. Love one another. We remember the lesson and seek to live it every day. This is the wisdom we hold in our hearts and carry through all our days. We remember the God who loves us and is with us as we journey through our lives. And we, we rejoice, rejoice, give thanks, and share the message and the love. Hmm. So, I asked Jennifer if I could please do the children's message instead of her because I had this idea about what I wanted to do. Um, and now I'm going to go looking and ask Suzanne to help me. Do we have any, any young, young folks or children with us this morning? The Schrocks? But they don't have their picture up. So, okay. Everybody else has taken a Sunday off. Um, so I want to mention to you all about two weeks ago. Two weeks ago in the children's message, we talked about how God guided the people of Israel on their journey with the pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire um, by day and by night. I want to suggest to you this morning that God's guidance takes other forms as well. And one of them is what we call the commandments. Commandments help people understand what God wants, how God wants them to behave and what they are to do or not to do. Anybody know how many commandments there are? We did them just a moment ago, but all you adults can hold up fingers and hands. There's Carol saying 10, there's Marie saying 10, Deb and Bob say that there are 20, I think. Oh, that's two of you, so that would make, yes. Okay, so 10 commandments um, is right. And if you were watching while we were doing that liturgy, you saw me trying to keep up. Now, the truth is, I can never recite the Ten Commandments. I cannot, for the life of me, remember all ten and list them through. Never have been able to. I know it's piteous, but it's true for a lot of people. 
especially since that um, that beginning one and the ending ones about God and God's name and God's image are like, how many is that anyhow? Sometimes I count it as three or four and sometimes I count it as one and yeah, 10 commandments. But the 10 commandments are what God gave to Moses to help offer guidance to the people. So <coughs> when Jesus was alive, some clever people thought that they would test him and say, Jesus, what are the most important commandments? Does anybody remember what he said? How many he said there were the most important commandments? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Anybody remember? Carol's, Carol's holding up two. Some, some people held up one. Oh, uh, thank you. T uh, Deb and, and Jim held up one each, meaning two. That's right. There were two commandments that Jesus said. Um, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. That is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. So Jesus said when he was tested that there were two commandments that he wanted everybody to remember were the most important commandments. And I can always remember two, right? I, I don't have any trouble remembering the two. One of the things that I don't always remember is at the end of his life, Jesus said, I give you a new commandment. And you'll notice that that's just one. And it's the simplest one of all. Love one another. That was it. We went from 10, that some of which were a little complicated and some of which were hard to remember, down to two, which we could almost all do, down to one, that's really only three words. Love one another. So I think that Jesus was really helping us to remember what's important and how we're supposed to live. Love one another. Let's have a simple prayer. God, we give you thanks for all your guidance and for all the ways you help us know how to live. Help us to remember Jesus' guidance, his commandment to love one another, and help us to carry it and do it every day. Amen. So, we come to our second scripture reading, um, and the second scripture reading is, so to speak, the second uh, recitation from scripture is from Exodus. Um, we're going to read selected verses from chapter 24, and then one little verse from chapter 31. Um, and this is not so much uh, the story of what's on uh, the story of the Ten Commandments as the story of how the Ten Commandments were recorded. So I'm going to turn to Stephen and ask him to share that reading with us and any words he has to share. The, the readings today are selected readings from Exodus 24 and then Exodus 31, 18. Um, the reason there's the gap is because um, in those missing scriptures that I'm not reading are all the details, dimensions, and uh, legalities on how the ark was to be built. And um, so they were not added for time's sake. So Exodus 24, starting in verse three. Moses came and told the people all the words of God and all the ordinances and all the people answered with one voice and said, all the words that our God has spoken, we will do. Verse 12. 
the God said to Moses, come up to me on the mountain and wait there, and I will give you the tablets of stone with the law and the commandment which I have written for their instruction. Verse 13. So Moses set out with his assistant Joshua, and Moses went up onto the mountain of God. To the elders he said, Wait here for us until we come to you again, for Aaron and her are with you. Whoever has a dispute may go to them. Then Moses went up to the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain. The glory of God settled on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it for six days. On the seventh day, God called Moses out of the cloud. Now the appearance of the glory of God was like a devouring fire on the top of the mountain in the sight of the people of Israel. Moses, Moses entered the cloud and went up on the mountain. Moses was on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. Exodus 18:31. When God finished speaking with Moses on Mount Sinai, God gave him the two tablets of the covenant, tablets of stone written with the finger of God. That is the reading of God's word. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Stephen. Suzanne, we're gonna start with the first tablet. I have pictures to go with today's sermon. But I have to say, as Suzanne finds that, bring, brings it up, that it took me a long time to convert from paper books to a Kindle. Now, whoop, that's the second set. The first set are the A, B, C, D. Sorry. Number five. Number five. So I was completely convinced that real books were more wonderful than a book on Kindle. I liked the feel of a real paper book in my hand. I enjoyed flipping the pages and dropping the book and losing my place and then picking it back up and finding my place again because I'd fallen asleep most of the time. And I liked the weight of the book in my hand and I liked being able to look at the book and know how far through the book I was. And then I got a Kindle, which really is a tablet. And I started reading books on that. And boy, was it easy. You know, no pages to turn, no things to drop and lose your place. No weight, barely at all. No, it was just this little small thing. I could make the print as big or as little as I wanted. It was amazing. And so I became a Kindle convert. But it took a while. And it has taken us a while in the history of Christian faith and Judeo-Christian faith to convert from tablets to other things. So our story in Exodus this morning talks about the tablets of the Ten Commandments. And what you're looking at a picture of first here is a side view of the oldest known existing copy of the tablet of um, of the Ten Commandments. It's one out of the two tablets and, um, that they have from the oldest existing pair. Now, this one was uncovered in 1913 um, during excavations in Israel. And they suspect that it is um, part of a set that were in a, uh, um, a synagogue um, in Samaria. This 
piece of stone, and Suzanne, give us the other picture of it, the full front picture. This piece of stone is about two feet square. Um, so two feet square, and it's marble, and it weighs 115 pounds, okay? So most of us are not wanting to pick that up and carry it around with us. Um, and if we had both of them, um, it would be, you know, twice as heavy. So, uh, you know, do we bench press 200 and, uh, 230 pounds? Not really. At least I don't. Some of you may. But it's not something that you want to carry around with you very often. The script is a Samaritan, Samaritan script from um, the, the time that it was probably copied or written. And uh, it was used in the synagogue in that place and in that time. We don't have the original tablets, or they've never been found at this point. Um, the original tablets that God gave to Moses were carried by the people of Israel throughout the Exodus and then into the Promised Land. But God wanted to make sure that the tablets lasted. And if you carry a tablet ever, the electronic kind, you know that an electronic tablet doesn't last long if it gets a lot of sand on it. You can imagine the same would be true of these ancient stone tablets. You get sand on a tablet of any kind and you've got problems. So God instructed the people to build a container for the tablets because 250 pounds isn't enough to have to carry with you, right? So that's what's in chapters 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31 of Exodus is the instructions about the container for the tablets. We know it as the Ark of the Covenant. And the Ark of the Covenant looks something like this, we think. It was made of a certain kind of wood and adorned with gold and had two angels on the top and it was set up so that it had um, those bar thingies which have a name that I'm not remembering what they are. Um, and, um, and four or more people carried it as Israel moved through the desert and into the promised land. But it wasn't just regular people who carried it. It was priests, the Levites, who were responsible for carrying the ark. And the truth is, chapter 30 and 31 really aren't so much about the ark itself and the building of the ark, but what the Levites were to do to purify themselves so they could carry the ark and how they were to dress. There were very specific instructions from God about all of this. And so we have an image that helps us a little bit understand what it might have looked like when the Levite priests were carrying the ark. And um, this is one of the better pictures that I found that, Im that imagines what it looked like as they carry the ark through the wilderness. Now you'll notice that even the ark was too fancy to be exposed to the elements. And so God gave instructions for a specific kind and shape and size of blue cloth that would cover the ark as they carried it. And so we can only imagine carrying the message from God through the desert and they did it in front of the people, just as the pillars of cloud and the pillar of fire went in front of the people so that they would know that the guidance of God was always leading them. So this is how the Israelites were supposed to remember 
God's guidance for them. The Ten Commandments. And I imagine that they probably all learned, all ten of them, in the correct order, and that they remembered as they watched them lead through the desert. Now, when Jesus came and taught us that perhaps we could summarize God's Ten Commandments in just two commandments, the Ark of the Covenant was already lost. It was already gone. And um, at that point, um, everybody was remembering the commandments in their own ways and probably reciting them in their own ways. And they no longer had a physical representation of, well, they had physical representations, but they were copies of the original tablets. And they no longer journeyed through the wilderness, so they didn't have to carry them in this way. But Jesus wanted his followers to carry the two commandments and eventually the one commandment with them. He wanted them to remember them and to take them with us wherever we, want, wherever we go, everywhere on our journey in life. And that's why I think Jesus simplified to the point that we could remember them and we could carry them with us wherever we went without any trouble at all. Because how hard is that? Love one another. The challenge is that we are not just to carry the guidance with us, but also to practice the guidance. And um, some days, especially when you're traveling through a wilderness like we are right now, remembering and practicing the guidance is not the easiest thing for us to do. Right? Right. So, I suggested to the children in their activity for today that they make themselves a way of remembering God's um, guidance, Jesus' guidance, and to carry it with them. So here's what I suggested they do. I suggested they cut themselves little slips of paper and write these words on them. God loves me and us. That goes on one side of the little slip of paper, and you can see that I had fun with colors. And then on the other side of the same slips of paper, three other words, love one another. So that we can remember, and all of us can know as we're traveling through life, that God loves us, God loves me, and God loves you, and that we are to love one another. So these little slips of paper were a half an inch by two inches long. Okay, they're, they're really quite tiny. They look big in the picture, right? And what I did with them, and what I suggested the children do, is to make them and then roll them up and cover them with a little bit of tape. So there you are, you, cover, there, you can see two of them are covered and one of them is being rolled around a string because once you make that, then you can put it on your wrist or on your neck and you can carry God's commandment with you. So this morning, you can see the picture, but you can also see that I have this lovely neon orange bracelet on my wrist, and I'm remembering God loves me, and I'm to love others as well. It's kind of a nice way of remembering what Jesus taught us about how we are to live. And the truth is that it's a great little craft for the kids. But the truth is, lots of us have 
a symbol like this to remember Jesus' teaching and how we are to live, don't we? Some of you wear something like this. Lots of us wear them all the time, and lots of, them, of us wear them occasionally. And there's no way you can see this, and I didn't make a picture of it. But this is my favorite cross. And there's actually two things on this necklace. One is my favorite cross, and the other is um, a descending dove. So these things around my neck often remind me of God's presence, and God's love for me, and God's commandment that I should love others. I wear that, and it helps me to remember. And it helps me to remember how I want to behave. Other people have things in their wallets, or um, do other things. Sometimes we carry, like, a little rock or a stone. I couldn't find my heart-shaped stone this morning, so I just grabbed a different one. Um, but some people will carry something in their pocket that reminds them of God's love and God's command to love one another. If we're really, really modern about it, it might be that we carry something on our phone, right? Like modern Tim, right? Tim, I'm sure that the background on your phone says, God loves me, love one another. All the time. All the time. <laughs> See, I paid attention. Uh-huh. <laughs> but there are a lot of people who do carry a picture or a note or something on their phone, which has become, um, you know, attached to us at the hip. And so we are still carrying God's message, still carrying God's guidance with us, just like our ancient Israelite ancestors, carrying God's wisdom and guidance with us so that we remember and so that we are reminded how we are to live. And I love that idea. I love the notion that God taught the people long ago how to live and to carry that guidance with them. And still today, we are carrying the guidance of God that we learned from Jesus with us. We carry it in our hearts and in our minds, and we carry it in other ways, whether it be a bracelet or a stone or a picture on your phone or a cross. We carry God's guidance and God's message in our hearts. And that causes us to be confident in our life of faith, to know something about where we might go when we feel lost. And we do these days feel kind of lost from time to time and wonder what in the world we're supposed to do and how we're supposed to behave. We can turn to the guidance of God and it will remind us that we are to love one another. That's my idea for how the ancient Israelites on the Exodus, their journey speaks to our journey for today. And I hope that maybe something that you heard was new or illuminated you. And if you want to make your very own paper beaded bracelet, um, on neon string or yarn or whatever you want, there are instructions on the sheet that came with the bulletin yesterday. Thanks be to God for God's partnership and God's companionship on all our journeys. I want to invite you to join me in singing a song that I can't imagine most of you don't know. But Tim says he doesn't know it. Um, really? It's really simple, though. We'll get it. It's super simple. Andy, you knew it, right? Yes. Play it through once, and then we'll join you in singing.
love the Lord your God with all your heart. Love the Lord your God with all your soul. Love the Lord your God with all your reminder of God's love for us and God's invitation for us to love God and one another. In this time, we come to the moments when we share our prayers for each other, for our world, and for our loved ones. I want to invite you into this time of prayer and to know that we offer our prayers for the healing and the peace of the world and for one another. Will you join me in the spirit of prayer? God, we give you thanks for your continuing presence with us, for your blessings, for your guidance, and for all the ways that you come to our aid in times of trouble. We pray, O oh God, that you would be with us today on our journeys, that you would guide us, and that you would send your spirit to those in need. Hear us as we pray for those in our lives and in our world who are in need of your help your guidance, your healing, and your strength. We lift up our prayers to you, O oh God. Joe. For Jasmine's continued recovery. For my father-in-law, Sam. For the searches, owners of Leo the Horse missing at Bearbrook State Park, and for all the um, yeah, park uh, rangers. How sad. He was, he was missing and they found him yesterday. He didn't make it. Oh. Very sad. Brian, my son-in-law. Cooper, a young boy, needs prayers. Wendy. And Josh. Rob, the forest firefighters. Karen. For Marion Smith and Bob Bradley and my brother John and others who have experienced recent heart issues, healing and courage and strength. My friend Patty, whose husband had a terrible accident a couple of weeks ago. For all who are in peril from natural disasters fires and storms and cyclones in every part of the world. For those struggling with mental illness. For those who seek and work for justice and equity and peace. For our country, may it heal and come together. For all those who celebrate birthdays and anniversaries and special days, especially our friend Connie Stone in her 90s celebrating her birthday. My, for my oldest son who turned 50 last Thursday. Matthew. For rain in the forecast. Hmm. Hallelujah. <laughs> For the DCC community, for support, Absolutely. love, and well wishes. For, all for the, the Zoom bombers. team. <laughs> 
for the Zoom team that makes it possible for me to sit in freedom and be in church. Hey. Gracious God, we give you thanks for all these blessings. We give you thanks for your presence with those in need. We are so grateful, God, that we are following you and that you are with us on our journeys and that you offer us hope and joy. Be with all your world in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And now, will you join in our voices together in singing our closing hymn, Bless Now, O God, the Journey, which is also printed on page three of your bulletin. And Tim would tell you this was a new hymn. It's new but, words, but... But it's really just new words. You're going to know the tune and be able to sing it with rousing voices. Bless now, O God, the journey that all people make. The path of noise and silence, the way of live and take. The trail is found in desert and from that leads me so far Dear friends, it is always a joy for us to gather together in the spirit, to gather together in the love of God. I send you this day with blessings. Remember and know God's love goes with you on your journey, on your day-to-day -day life, on every path that you take. So you go with blessing, and you are to go and be a blessing of God's love along the way. Let us go with hope and joy and love. Amen. 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 from Nancy, of course.
<laughs> see some of you in person next week. See some of you in this form next week. Have a great week, people. Stay safe. Be well. Be well, sir. Go in peace. Yeah.